All right, so there's some sort of it's wires that need to be soldered onto this well, jungle chip. So, and is there yeah. any other? Do you well, need like here, something here, to run it or a bunch of let's other capacitors? Let's start kind of and... from the beginning here. Um, you have to okay. have first off. You have to have the TV right, and you really have to have the actual service manual for that television. You need to have the full-on schematics for the boards and able to do this the best way possible. So thankfully, a lot of these TVs are documented, but there are many that are not. So you can't just go and pick any CRT television generally and mod it for um, RGB. It has to, like you said, either has to have a jungle chip or there are other chips that will, um, I believe, like do the jungle Mm. interpretation and they're not, they look a little bit different. The good thing about the TVs from this 90s period is the um the service it's easier to service those there's a lot less smaller components you're not really like this tv is all it's all through hole components there's a lot of space there's a lot of good Mm. places to um because see when when i did my modifications before i would physically lift the uh the rgb and and uh, blanking pins from the chip itself, like lift, desolder them mm-hmm. and slowly try to pull them out and, you know, stick straight. And then you'd insert an in, and then you'd insert an out. But anyway, that's one of the ways, but uh, anyway, before you do any of that, you have to have the schematics because it's really difficult mm-hmm. to understand, you know, some of the, some on the older TVs, it might be easier to tell because you look at a chip and there's only two chips yeah. on them and, it's like, well, that's obviously the jungle chip. That's actually, and... it's a, that's a point mm-hmm. I want to stop on for a second because that's really interesting. Again, I'm trying to put myself in the terms of I'm, I'm sitting at home, I'm watching Steve's videos, I've got access, there's a couple of weird sets that maybe come up in my area, I want to get something, this sort of person, right? That uh, the, each, ch- like, each chip can be different. Um yeah, I mean, there's each oh, like God, there's different. For examples yeah. on this one like that each... I've got, I've just got. The, this is not this is not an example of the service manual. This is just, or I mean, mm. I'm sorry. This is this is an example. This is the first page of the service manual. Sorry, it is, but you can right. see down towards the bottom. Um, oh yeah, right here in the middle actually. It says BA1 chassis. Chassis. So there's okay. there's probably mm. half a dozen different models that use that chassis, but then there's like a BA2 right. and a BA3 mm-hmm. or even other letters and numbers. And the thing is, is they might have been different in a region, and they may not have that OSD blanking and jungle chip setup. There are, were some TVs that didn't have it sure. wired in the same way and don't actually have the ability to do that. Um, uh, first off, the TV has to have an OSD, right? So you can't use any right. television okay, straight up. that's completely analog um, and do this style of a modification. It has to have some type of an on-screen menu. So, um, you know, immediately don't go think you can get, like, the really cool wood grain television and easily modify that to do anything yeah. besides hopefully so. just even work at this point, right? So um, just the the ones that you want to RGB mod, uh, first off, you know, if you're just, like, walking your way through this, you need to... Mm. It, again, have that documentation. Um, there's no problems with getting those the six schematics. You know, drawing out a pl- drawing out a plan it- and saying, "Will this work?" Posting it on Twitter or something, and just being like, "Hey, would anybody look at this for me and tell me what they think of that this design?" And most of the time, you'd get some good feedback. Uh, I know it sounds crazy, but I'm thinking about the way the the. That mm-hmm. it's wired up, and is it like, is it such that, uh, and and well, like, so we've said there are many different models, many you know, a bunch of different jungle chips, a bunch of different things, and what we're sort of looking for is what's this point, what's that point, what's this particular points, and well, that could be on any number yeah, of chips that are happen that, to be and in there. That's why it's you need the schematics because the schematics it says like right. jungle chip on the schematic, and then it um, it gives you every single pin line, so then you go find it on the board. Mm-hmm. And you're like, these are the three pins that are RGB, and this is the one that's blanking. 
And so you can, the really people who are really good at it don't just do what I did, which was intersect it at the chip because you can damage the chip. And I damaged the chip on one of them I did, and I had to buy a new chip. Thankfully, I found a replacement. But you, um, okay. the really smart people will find a way along the path, you know, uh, and there's mm-hmm. a lot, like a lot of times these boards have so many different paths put on them. It could even be a path that's not really even in use buy your tv you cut in you splice and you use that spot instead or even removing like a filter capacitor surface mount some of the people that uh really good do stuff like that but again there's generally a spot on the board where you can almost just remove solder and just put it on there or you know attach it to something sometimes you have to cut traces other times it's remove a component but um, there's not like an exact point on the board. That's why you have to basically go and plan it per television, unless it's one that somebody else has already done completely. And it's like, this is how you do it. And it works and it will go through this way on this specific jungle chip, um, which, you know, that's what the good thing about the Sony is, is it's so common a television that ones like that more we'll get more use out of uh having a rgb guide for but yeah you're going to get into spots where it's all going to depend on the circuitry design of the television the um and see what the fun here's another i have a hypothetical for you in this situation again i'm I'm pushing the line because people are so interested in this so let's take a subset of possible like there's possible tvs that could be rgb modded and let's take a subset which is just sony's from like that era like the one that you had similar let's take even a little bit in the future we'll just take those era sony's right let's say Is it just a matter of finding the points wherever that may be on the board? Or is it actually like for each TV, different capacitors, different resistors? Yeah, there there are. It it, kind of does depend on, um, I think it does depend on the TV for the most part. And it's just like, I'll be honest Mm. with you. It's been, that's why I wanted to do this one. Because I think it's been almost four years since I've done an RGB mod. Okay. And uh, it's pretty self-explanatory for this, for the Sony's where... Um, I know that if I pulled up the guide, I should have that you can look at generic guides where people talk about it on forums and uh, figure out what they're saying. Because it's like tie, um, you know, tie your uh, your red, green and blue colors in put a you do need a capacitor in there or you do need a resistor in there um, on each line because you have to still attenuate your signal a little bit because again you're sending in you're opening up a raw highway and it, see that's i think that there are people that are really smart that can find a spot on the board where there might already be that resistor or something in the path and okay. 